All right, in this video, I'm going to go through the heating curve and explain everything that you need to be able to pull off of one for our thermochemistry test. So this is a heating curve. Um, typically, you see temperature on the y-axis in degrees Celsius. On the x-axis, you can see a couple of different things. This one has minutes, so as we're progressing along, time is going by, or this is similar to what we did in class when we made our heating curve. But you may also see heat input or something like that down here where this is measured in joules. The shape will be the same no matter what the uh, particular graph is, whatever they put down there. You'll still end up with this slope going up, then a plateau, then a slope going up, then a plateau, and then if you can capture the gas, you would get another final slope going up here at the end. Let's talk about what's going on in each of these segments and what you need to know about them. First of all, in this segment here, we have a solid in the container, and it would be nothing but a solid, theoretically. And that solid is warming up. That solid gets warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer until it reaches this point at about 60 degrees, a little bit less maybe 55 degrees, somewhere in there, where it begins to melt. And as it melts, obviously, you would have solid and liquid in the container. As we progress along, the amount of solid would be decreasing, the amount of liquid would be increasing until we reach this point where it would be all liquid in the container and the temperature would start to rise again. That liquid would get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter until we reach this point where it would begin to boil. And as it boils you have liquid and gas As you progress along, less and less liquid, more and more gas, until it would be all gas. And like I said, if you can capture that gas, you could continue heating it. That gas would warm up until it became a plasma at some point. Now there's a lot of other things that we need to know about this beyond what's going on state-wise, where the melting is, where the boiling is. We have to recognize when something melts, it's absorbing heat of fusion. And what the heat of fusion is going to do here is, is weaken the intermolecular forces between the particles, allow those particles to fall out of their fixed positions that they have in the solid, and begin to move around randomly like they do in liquid. Up here at boiling, it's absorbing heat of vaporization. And what this heat of vaporization is doing is removing the intermolecular forces. Liquids have them, gases don't. So as the substance boils, the energy that's flowing into it has to be removing those intermolecular forces, allowing those particles to move around independently. There are changes in kinetic and potential energy that take place along the way. We remember that change in temperature is a change in kinetic energy. So as the solid warms up, the kinetic energy is increasing. The particles are vibrating faster and faster. Happens when the liquid warms up. As the liquid warms up, the particles move faster and faster. That's an increase in kinetic energy. That would happen with the gas, too. So where the gas would be warming up, that would be an increase in kinetic energy. I don't even know if that's on the screen. How oh, good it is. There's an increase in kinetic energy up there, too. Bottom line, anywhere the temperature is going up, the kinetic energy is going up. Temperature is a relative measure of the kinetic energy of particles of matter. Low temperature means they move slow. High temperature means they move fast. So as our temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy is increasing. As the temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy is increasing. As temperature increases, kinetic energy increases. Intermolecular force 
is related to potential energy. So as we move through this melting part of the graph, we are changing those intermolecular forces. We're absorbing heat of fusion, we're spreading the particles out, we're weakening the intermolecular force. This amounts to a change in potential energy. So as it melts, the potential energy changes. The temperature stays constant, so we know the kinetic energy is staying constant. But there's still energy flow into it. That energy is changing the potential. And the same thing happens up here at boiling. This is a change in potential energy. Again, energy is still flowing into it, but what's happening is not a temperature increase. The temperature is constant, so we know that the kinetic energy is constant. It's the potential energy that's changing whenever the states are changing. And again, it's dealing with intermolecular forces. Heat of vaporization is removing them. And because of that, we see a change in potential. Oops. Now, one last thing we need to be able to do here is find the melting points and boiling points. Again, this is where it melts. So we come over the y-axis, and that's somewhere around 55 degrees Celsius. Where the melting happens, you find the melting point. And if a question asks for point, well, they want a number. So make sure you give them a number. Boiling is here about halfway between 90 and 100, so let's call it 95 degrees Celsius. And again, you would just see where it's boiling, come over here to the y-axis, get that number. This is the melting point, because that's where melting is happening. That's the boiling point because that's where boiling is happening. And that should pretty much take care of everything you have to pull off of a heating curve.